And uh, we get uh, our head baseball coach, Sean Stifler, with us. Uh, Stiff's been our pitching coach for the last few years and uh, has done a tremendous job and, and now is our head baseball coach and got his first two wins That's last right. weekend as a head coach. So congratulations, my friend. Thank you. You had to pick on my alma mater to do that, so <laughs> that'll be reflected in your performance review. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, two great wins by our guys. Uh, certainly, it's never easy to start the season. You know, nope. you don't know what you're getting. But um, on the road, we go and get two wins and not a great environment in terms of uh, weather and conditions and all that. But, but uh, you know, kudos to you and, and the guys for getting it done. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. This, uh, this time of year is always a little bit up in the air just because you don't know what you're going to get weather-wise. You never know how, how prepared you are. And, and uh, to go on the road and, and um, play two very good opponents in Boston College and, uh, and Elon and, and play them in, in some, some – not in some questionable weather, you know. It wasn't great, great conditions, but uh, to play as well as we did was quite, uh, quite a surprise. It's very happy. Well, in, in uh, for those uh, of our fans who don't know all your background, you've been with us for six years. You were uh, at Mason before that. You yeah. played at Mason, so since you went to Mason, we'll speak a little slower for you. So that's no <laughs> problem. <laughs> I had to get that one in. It's like a CAA thing, you know. But um, but you've coached 29 draft picks yeah. and uh, and nine All Americans over your 11 years. Uh, what is it uh, about what you do and what you've learned from Coach Keys and all that, that that certainly has allowed you to be a part of developing such good talent? I, I don't think necessarily it's anything that I've done. I think it's, it's I've worked for good people and at good universities that have attracted some pretty good talent. Um, you know, obviously we were, we were lucky at George Mason, the coach for gentlemen up there. It's been it's been coaching college baseball for 30 years and Bill Brown and he built that program and had his own reputation. And, and, and the CA was was a baseball conference at that point that held its own as far as in the national rankings you could you could really get some pretty blue chip recruits at that time and and so we were, i was very fortunate to be at the right place at the right time with that and then obviously to come down here and work for paul keys and and his you know his reputation of player development and and the things he taught me i mean he's had he coached over 50 guys that played professional baseball and and eight that end up playing uh, serving time in the major leagues you know so so at that point, you know, to be able to, to pick up things from them and, and learn from them, and I've just been fortunate enough to work for good people and at good universities and be at the right place at the right time, to be honest with you. Well, and, and sort of, just, you know, you have all that background and what you've learned and people from whom you've learned. Describe the feeling Friday afternoon, two outs. We're about to roll one up and get a win. Describe what's going on in your head and in, in your heart, for that matter. Well, first off, the first thing I thought about was, you know, obviously Coach Keys is in my thoughts the whole time, but, but our kids, you know, the team. I just uh, what the last 8 to 12 months has been like for them and some of the things that they've had to go through and, and to come out and just, just be as prepared and, 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 and play as hard as they did. I was, I was very, very excited for them. And then, and then automatically I thought of Coach and, um, yeah. you know, and, and what it would have meant to him to see them play that hard and, and, and play that well and, and how happy he would have been. And, and um, you know, and, and, and it's kind of a surprising story, but the, the, one of the assistant coaches for Boston College was one of Paul's first assistants here. That's right. That's right. Steve Ingram. Steve and, Ingram, um, yeah. you know, and got an opportunity to have a moment with him before the game when we talked about Coach. And, and uh, that was quite touching. And, and he actually, after we won the game, gave, gave me the high five signal you know, across the field. And uh, so it was, it was pretty emotional. And I looked over and I, I didn't think about it. And one of our assistants said, Coach, you know, we better keep that lineup card. You know, we better <laughs> grab that dugout card. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you know, um, but we did. And, and, and I'm glad to have it. And like I said, um, I will never forget it, certainly. Well, you earned it, certainly. And in the last 12 months, it's, it's been a roller coaster. Yes. I think the nice part is all the pro guys who have reached out, sure. whether it's Clay Meredith or Cody Epley or even, you know, Jerry Depoto, who's now the GM of the Angels, is a, is a VCU grad. Um, you know, what is it about VCU that, that not only, you know, has a special connection with Major League Baseball, but how nice has that been to see all these Major League guys reach out uh, to you as you're, you get your career uh, yeah. going as that's really been, you know, really one of the most touching things through the whole situation as, as Coach got sick, just the amount of people who, not only of our alums, but across the country who had at one point been connected with uh, Coach Keys, who had reached out to me and offered their, their sympathy or their help or anything that they could do and, and you know, would it come with the team or any questions I had. And, and, uh, and then obviously our alums and, uh, you know, Clay Meredith and Jerry Depoto and Sean Marshall and, and um, Scott Sizemore and those guys right away were like, what do you need? How can we help? Um, and, and the biggest thing was every time they called, they called asking about Paul's family. First off, how can we help Paul's family? Yep. That's the first thing we got to make sure. And uh, 
So just, you know, it's, it was obvious the impact the coach had had on all their lives, but also the impact that VCU had on their lives. And, and, and every one of those guys are, are very, very, you know, fortunate for playing at VCU, played for Paul Keyes, and they don't forget those things. And that's, that's, a nice, that's nice to see. Well, and it's a huge recruiting advantage as well. No, no question about it. I mean, to be able to say, hey, look, this guy played here, you know, Sean Marshall played here and was no different than you, he, you know, from, you know, from the south side of, the, of Richmond. And, and, you know, Scott Sizemore was, you know, here's what he hit as a freshman. Then here's what he, he did as a sophomore. And he went yep. to the Cape and became a fifth-round pick. And it, he did the same things. And, you know, to, to use those guys and to know that those guys have the support of the, uh, the program. And he, even Cody Epley, who, who came in town a couple of weeks ago for an event for Coach, Cody was not a big blue chip prospect. He was not a high draft pick. He was just a guy who learned how to play baseball the right way from Coach Keys and got his degree here at VCU. Was a senior sign. Now he's pitching in the big leagues. You know, and he's, you know, so it's, uh, you know, to have those guys and have them in your corner and to be able to use them as resources for, for recruiting, but just to, uh, just to get bounce ideas off of. You know, yeah. it's a tremendous resource. Well, in uh, you know, you, you talk about these guys and the impact they have. You know, coming up, it, it's a special time between now and, and uh, between now and, and certainly the beginning of April. But we get the opener tomorrow. Pitchers yep. and catchers. You know, Cody's down and doing pitchers and catchers. But our openers tomorrow. Sure. What what makes baseball so special on opening day? I mean, you know, other openers are this is great, but baseball opening day is a special day. No question. That's that's that, that is a good question. And um, you know, it's something that I think you know everybody has that that dream of of being an opening day with their father or their son or, or you know. Or, or somebody special with them and and uh it's just it's just something to be said i don't know if it's the fact that it it, it represents spring and summer's coming and 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 you know better things are ahead and it's a new start for everyone yep but um it certainly it certainly has a grasp on america and, and uh, you know it is the national pastime and even though i hate the word pastime <laughs> for that sport, i like to use this the national current time that, that's right <laughs> that, that's right but um you know, there's something to be said about getting in the bleachers and getting your peanuts and, and uh, yeah. your Coke and, you know, and, and sitting back and watching a ball game. Well, it's it's like a national holiday. I mean, sure. my dad and I went to 26 straight opening oh, days. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and I think it's one of those things where um, if, if you can connect on certain things or not connect on certain things, but you always have opening day. No doubt. You know, no and, and, and for the guys who are playing, it's a special day, too. So, you know, our team this year, what are our guys thinking right now? Uh, I can I can promise you they're gonna they're gonna uh, have a tough time sleeping. Tonight. You know I mean it's just something yeah. about it. it. You know as exciting as it was to open up on the road, there's nothing like opening up at home. You know and uh, to put your white uniform on. That's yeah. the first thing. No question. Put the lights on, on. You know and put your home lights on and run out in front of your family and your friends and the people that are sp special and important to you and and to and to represent your university. You know and so. So, you know, opening day has always been something that, you know, especially at home and, and being here in Richmond, we've had the opportunity to open up at home pretty early in the spring. And, yep. and that's, you know, that's a nice touch. And to, uh, you know, I think this year after getting off to a, a pretty good start and they're feeling pretty confident right now, I, I think that um, if Mother Nature allows us, we'll be ready to go tomorrow. Well, in, and we'll, we're playing a team tomorrow in St. Joe's who's in our league, but we're not playing this year. This is a, a non-conference game. Yeah. What does the league look like for, for our fans who don't know about it? The league's going to be extremely tough. It's, it, it's, it's really a league. It's got some great young coaches in it. Um, you know, if you looked across the scoreboards this, uh, this past weekend on opening day, um, St. Joe's, who we're playing tomorrow, they uh, went down and beat Stetson two out of three, yep. and, and Stetson's obviously got a great program. Um, Rhode Island went down and, and played Florida State in a very, very tough three-game set and I ended up losing two, two of those ball games late. Um, St. Louis beat Oral Roberts two out of three. So I mean, uh, Richmond right now is 5-0. Oh. Yep. I don't like to talk about them, but you know they're 5-0 and oh right now. And, and so the league's going to be very, very tough. And, and um, University of Dayton, who won the league last year, um, they returned a lot of players. They led, the, they led the NCAA in stolen bases last year. They play a different style. And, so you have to be prepared every weekend. There's no question about it. You got good effort from your starting pitching in that we, first weekend. We did. Somehow we managed to get through the weekend um, with, 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 you know, I like the weekends where you play two games and you can, you can pitch three of your starters. <laughs> um, Those are good weekends. Yeah, no, no question. Um, but uh, we did. I tell you what, you know, when, we, when, we, when I sit back and look at the weekend, the stats that, that we always look at, I look at from the pitching standpoint and defense standpoint, I look at did we commit any errors. And yep. we didn't all weekend. 18 innings, we didn't commit an error all weekend. Amazing. Yeah, that was unbelievable. And, and we walked three guys. I look at walks. You know, we, we walked three guys. You know, and uh, to come out and throw that many strikes and, 
and we talk about it all the time. Those are the things we can control. You know, the energy that we play with on defense and, and the amount of strikes we throw. And the big, the big thing we talk about on our pitching staff is no matter where we go in the country, it's going to be 60 feet 6 inches. It doesn't change. So there's no reason not to be able to throw strikes. And that's what we concern ourselves with. So to get those efforts, um, Heath Dwyer, sophomore from Arizona, was fabulous on Friday. He was a little bit up in the zone early on, but got his legs under him and really settled down. And then uh, Ryan Farrow, senior from right here, right here in Atlee High School, was uh, just absolutely fabulous on Sunday. Sunday. As, as good as I, I'm truthfully about as good as I've ever seen him. So knock on wood, but he was really good. Well, we, we obviously have uh, a tough conference schedule coming in, and we play one heck of a non-conference schedule. Um, why don't you sort of tell folks about what you know uh, what's going to be sort of planned for Coach Keys this year too, in his memory and some of the non-conference games we play. A absolutely. I mean, it's, it was always Coach Keys's philosophy to to go out and play the best people that we could. And, and, and it's always going to be the goal of this program to be an NCAA regional type team. And to do that, you have to play regional type people. No question. And, and you know, we're going we're gonna to play uh, next week. We go down to East Carolina. We have North Carolina on the schedule, home and home with uh, UVA, Virginia Tech. Um, we also have, uh, you know, like I said, we had Boston College. We have Pitt on the schedule, Big East team that had a very good weekend. So, you, you know, and then we also have our in-state we'll in OCA rivalries. George Mason, we're yep. going to play them midweek. And then we have the rivalry still with Old Dominion. And with Old Dominion on the 27th of April, we're going to have the, uh, the tribute game for Coach Keys, the Key Dog Classic, the Strikeout Cancer. And it's going to be a, everything's going to be in remembrance of him that day. And we're going to do that down at Hampton at the Peninsula Pilots um, Stadium. And that's going to be a special night for all of us. It really will be. I mean, uh, you know, his... Uh the thing you remember most of, he's a baseball guy. No doubt. I mean, he was a baseball guy, and he loves his time of year, and there's no question about that. All right. Uh, it, our, you know, generation has seen some pretty darn good baseball players. Sure. Who, if you had to put nine players together in our generation. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you know, I, I told you. We only really have four minutes left. Hard this, is this is like a 60-minute one, right? Yeah, Hard-hitting yeah. journalism. I think I can get there, through there pretty quick. I think I can get Okay, we're going to start for, oh, jeez. Go one through nine. In my lineup, or can I, can I go positionally? Yeah. Positionally, yeah. of positionally. course, because I'm a defense guy, okay. so I, I look positionally. Behind the plate, I would start Gary Carter. No question. I would start Gary Carter. He'd be behind the plate for me. I'd go over to third base at Chipper Jones. Yep. I'll go to shortstop with Cal Ripken and Rozzy Smith. We'll, we'll see who's, you know. Who's healthy that yeah, day. Yeah, who's healthy that day. Um, at second base, maybe Roberto Alamore, maybe Paul Molitor. Yep. Um, for, first base is a little bit difficult for me because you have so many DHs that ended up over there. Yep. Um, well, my, my hero would have been Will Clark, but I'm not going to put him there. Uh, maybe Mark Grace. Mark uh, Grace is a good one. Perhaps. I could be I could be missing somebody. Perhaps perhaps maybe a Mark Tech. Actually, I like really like Mark Tech Mark Sherry, as well. Yeah. You know, maybe an Albert Pohl's probably. Yep. Okay to go there. Um, in in right field. In right field, my outfield right now would be Hamilton in right. Yep. Uh, it would be tough for me to take Mike Trout out of center. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> He's um, pretty good at yeah, it. Yeah. No no question. Um, in, in left field, Barry Bonds, you know, and, and my, my, my sprinkles in there would be Derek Jeter's got to be there somewhere, yep. probably. Griffey Jr.'s yeah. got to be there around yeah. there somewhere. Yeah, and, and Griffey Jr., boy, I tell you, you, you forget about how many great players there actually yep. are. My starting pitcher, if I had to take anybody to win a game. One win game. Win one game for me would, it, you know. Uh, Roger Clemens would probably Ooh. Roger Clemens would probably be <laughs> broke my heart. <laughs> wow. What, what, what were you hoping? Schilling. I, Come on, Schilling. man. Well, there's not many. There's not many better big game pitchers. Big game. Than Schilling, no question about it. But I, um, certainly, uh, you know, boy, I tell you, there's a lot of good players. Though we could do that for hours. We could sit here for hours. Well, uh, thanks for being here. Absolutely. It, it's been tremendous to have you on. Obviously, in uh, the job you're doing right now is tremendous. Appreciate it. And uh, and certainly. Um, you know, we hope our fans keep Coach Keys in their memory as we go as well. Absolutely. I appreciate it, guys. Opening day tomorrow, Opening 3 o'clock against St. Joe's at Dime. I want to encourage everyone to head on over to the Dime tomorrow to watch VCU baseball kick off their home schedule against St. Joe's. Of course, the entire schedule online at vcuathletics.com, and you can get that flex plan. Yeah, again, vcuathletics.com, and, of course, 828 Rams. Coach, good luck tomorrow. Thank you, guys. That's going to wrap it up, Ed. Uh, thanks, thanks so guys. much, Coach Thank Stifler. You.